Let's take a moment and see what it takes to tint the color of the flare so that it matches the light that the flare is coming from. Okay, I've set up the scene with four little lights and used just random vivid lighting to pick a color. And then to attach a flare to a light track, you simply select the light track and click this button which adds a flare. And you get the default flare right here. Now the reason why we can't see this, of course, is because it's a spotlight. Um, if we change this to a point light, You'll be able to see the lights, but of course now you can't see the you can't see the colors that were coming from the lights. So for the purpose of this uh, example tutorial here, I wanted spotlight so that you can see the colors down here. And then what we'll do is we'll go up here to the uh, flare controls, and then come on down to the end where it says visibility angle, and crank that all the way up so that way you'll be able to see the flares even though the spotlights aren't pointing right directly into the camera. Now to make a flare use the color of the light you turn on this button right here use light color so we turn this on and ordinarily you would expect that the flares would now all be the same color as the light but they're not and the key to this is the fact that they're simply white white flares can't be colorized um, well they can be colorized but um, it doesn't give you exactly the look that they that's always preferred. And I want to show you the, the little details about this that really make it look nice. Okay, If I change it from colorized to just tint, what it does now is it retains all the brightness, the luminosity of the tint of the, um, of the flare itself. So when you're using something, let me make these guys a little bit smaller here. When you're using something like this prom night uh, example, and I'm going to turn off the light icons here, you see how it's nice and fully bright, it's, but it also has light areas as well as dark areas. If I turn it on to colorize, you'll see everything sort of flattens out, and you end up with just fully saturated values all the way through. So you sort of lose that the brightness, that tinty look that makes it look so cool. If we do something here like this pineapple flare, you see that looks gorgeous, and it's got brights and darks in it at the same time. If I switch it over to colorize, it doesn't look nearly as full. It looks a lot more vivid, of course, but it doesn't look nearly as rich because it's missing now the light-colored tints. So if you do want a light-colored tint and you want a flare like one of these guys that are only white, I want to show you how to, how to work with those, okay? Um, what you do is this. You come in here and you just double click on this and that opens up our flare editor. And then you take a look at where the color is coming from, what it is that you want each different color. So this is the solo button. So this you see, there are the little short spikes there. These are the long fan spikes and then this is the hot center. So what you do is you just click on these one at a time and then come down to where it says color and you can see this bright white area. Um, we can just give it a saturation. Now it doesn't even matter what color these things are as long as you're not using a proportional tint. Uh, but we can take these guys. I'm going to leave this one white because that gives us like the white in the center that we like so much. And so when we come back here now you see these look much more alive. If I switch this over to colorize you can see the difference. Instead of having the white in the center you see it's just more the same. So um, I really like this tint look. I think it's awesome and this is then how you get these guys to match up. So um, one of the things I should mention too is that this same problem happens when you're working with very pastel light colors. Let's give you an example. If we come over here and switch from random vivid to random pastel, uh, the lighting colors are going to be very, you know, pastel, right? They're not vivid at all. And these make the flares do the same sort of thing. Now again, if, if the flares aren't um, colorized to start like this, they'll end up just white. Some of the flares will have sort of a pastel look to them already, like this rocky flare right here is very pastel-ish to begin with. And um, you don't get a lot of variation in the uh, in the flare that's that's happening. So again, the way to buff that up and make it look more intense is to change the um, saturation of the flare. So if we come up here and bump that way up like that, and let's see, red inside, red glow, outside glow, some of these, this one's already a little bit saturated. And let's see, spike ball, let's bump that up so it's got some saturation to it too. There we go, that should colorize it pretty well. And now when we come back to here, you see it picks up much more of the color. You see there's a lot of difference between this color and the desaturated color we had just a second ago. 
those are the sort of things you need to keep in mind uh, when you're working with pastel colors. You'll need to bump up the saturation. When you're working with the, uh, the non-saturated flares at all, you need to bump up the saturation um, in order to make the flares look a little bit more punchy. And remember to use tint instead of colorize. We do give you colorize because sometimes that's easier to work with. So there you go, using light color to tint the flares.